welcome to the fourth episode covering recent fleet news and the first episode of its kind posted on our Long Haul channel. As always, if you want to check out other videos in this series, as well as our summaries on recent incidents, you'll find them in our main channel playlist called Simple Flying Summarizes or Long Haul Playlist titled News Summaries. With all of that out of the way, let's see what's happened recently with airline fleets. First off, let's look at orders and potential orders. At the very end of September, Italio Trasporto Aero, or ITA, announced the signing of a memorandum of understanding with Airbus to acquire 28 new planes. The airline intends to order 10 A330 NEOs, 7 A220s, and 11 A320 NEOs with this move. At the start of October, Budget Airline Air Asia confirmed it would convert its outstanding 13 A320s to A321 NEOs. It takes the number of A321 NEOs on order with Airbus to 362, with deliveries scheduled until 2035. The planes will get farmed out to various Air Asia subsidiary airlines as demand warrants. Around the same time, Lufthansa said it would be leasing four Airbus A350 900s coming from three different lessers. These will join the airline's fleet at the start of 2022. On the topic of acquiring A350s, Delta announced an incremental acquisition of two more used Dash 900s planned for delivery in the fourth quarter of 2021. Over in the Middle East, Royal Jordanian announced a new five-year plan that'll see the airline modernize its fleet by 2026. The airline plans to take an additional 21 aircraft, which will be a choice between the Airbus A320neo or the Boeing 737 MAX, and a choice between the Airbus A220 or Embraer E2. Building on its August deal for 36 A321neos, Jet2 agreed to purchase a further 15 A321neos, with delivery to occur between 2026 and 2029. It was already a surprise over the summer that the historically Boeing operator had chosen to change camps. Now the budget carrier is doubling down on Airbus. We very much welcome Jet2.com's decision, said Christian Shearer, chief commercial officer at Airbus, in August. Traditionally, having been operating non-fly-by-wire aircraft, we note with great satisfaction that after having tested a couple of leased A321s and run a comprehensive evaluation, Jet2.com is forward-looking and investing in modern and future-proof Airbus fly-by-wire technology. Then, at the end of October, Australian low-cost startup Bonza announced that it would launch operations in 2022 using a fleet of roughly three Boeing 737 MAX jets. Bonza CEO Tim Jordan says that the company got a phenomenal deal on the aircraft, which will be leased out by the firm 777 Partners. On the more speculative side, sources report that Kuwaiti budget airline Jazeera Airways is eyeing an order for either 30 Airbus A320neos or 30 Boeing 737 Maxes. It's expected that the announcement will be made at this year's Dubai Air Show, where we'll likely see a fair bit of other fleet news as well. Finally, for this section, we saw Air Canada uncancel an order for two A220s while simultaneously reporting that it would be expediting the delivery of its undelivered 737 MAX aircraft. In its report, the airline CEO said, To support our network restoration, we've reversed our decision to cancel two Airbus A220 aircraft orders and are now accelerating deliveries of new Boeing 737 MAX aircraft. The airline will now accept four Boeing 737 MAX aircraft during the fourth quarter of 2021. Moving on to the topic of deliveries, we had Air Belgium take the first of two Airbus A330-900 aircraft, Air Tanzania take two A220-300 simultaneously, Air New Zealand accept its fifth A320neo, and Air Baltic take one A220-300, its 32nd A220. On this latest delivery, Air Baltic CEO Martin Gauss stated, We are delighted that a total of seven Airbus A220-300 have joined our sustainable fleet this year. We're now the largest Airbus A220-300 operator in the world and the largest Airbus A220 operator in Europe. For A380s, ANA finally took delivery of its third orange Superjumbo in mid-October 
while Emirates reportedly delayed its very last A380, the last to ever be built, until December. In terms of aircraft leaving airline fleets, we had UK's TUI Airways retire its last Boeing 757-200 on October 4th, marking an end to the airline's 757 operations. Over in Asia, three Thai Airways A330-300s are set to leave the airline due to the carrier's restructuring plans. Thai has also added a flight simulator to the list of equipment it no longer needs. As we had reported last year, Thai Airways had put 34 airplanes for sale, of which 32 were wide bodies. The list included 12 of its older 777s, 9 A340s, two 737s, one A300, and all 10 of its 747-400s. On October 16th, another McDonnell Douglas MD-80 was retired. Danish Air Transport, or DAT, said goodbye to its last unit of the veteran narrowbody type with a special flight to and from Copenhagen, Denmark. Approximately 160 units are still in service across the industry, with airlines like USA Jet Airlines, World Atlantic Airlines, and several others as the primary operators of the jet. The very next day, Lufthansa operated its final MD-11 flight after more than two decades of operations with the type. This retirement marked the end of MD-11 operators based in Europe. And while it's not yet a retirement story, Spanish long-haul carrier Plus Ultra has announced that it had a deadline to retire its Airbus A340 fleet. The airline plans to phase out the three quad jets by early 2023 and replace them with more efficient jets for long journeys. Now let's look at fleet and aircraft reactivations, something that has become quite common as the world continues to recover from the global health crisis. At the start of October, British Airways confirmed the return of the Airbus A380. Initially, this reactivation will see four aircraft return to operate flights to Los Angeles, Miami and Dubai from December. The airline is also conducting short-haul crew familiarization flights to Frankfurt and Madrid. Then, in a sharp U-turn from past comments and plans, Qatar Airways revealed that it would be reactivating part of its A380 fleet. This will consist of two A380 services between Doha and London Heathrow in mid-December, as well as another service between Doha and Paris CDG. Simple Flying reached out to Qatar Airways, who told us, As a result of the grounding of a significant number of Qatar Airways Airbus A350 fleet by our regulator due to an ongoing issue relating to the fuselage surface below the paint, which is degrading at an accelerated rate, we've been left with no alternative but to bring a small number of our A380 fleet, in addition to some A330 aircraft, back into operation. Mid-October saw Singapore Airlines become another airline to confirm the return of its A380s. The airline will place the jet on its vaccine travel lane flights to and from Heathrow from mid-November. The airline is also conducting short daily one-hour flights to Kuala Lumpur as it phases its super jumbos back into regular operations. The following week saw Qantas announce an early return of their Airbus A380s. This will take place in April 2022, three months earlier than previously announced. Our customers and crew love flying on our flagship A380s, so news that they will be back flying to Los Angeles again from April next year will be very welcome, stated Qantas CEO Alan Joyce. The first A380 will make it back to Australia on Christmas Day to assist with crew training ahead of its return to service. Well, as usual, we weren't able to cover everything in this video or go into as much detail as we would have liked. But as with all of our videos, there's a more detailed corresponding article on simpleflying.com. Check out the links in the description to learn more. And as always, share your thoughts on this video and any of the fleet changes we covered by leaving a comment. In addition to our daily YouTube videos, Simple Flying publishes over 150 articles and a podcast every week. If you're looking for the latest aviation news and insights, visit simpleflying.com. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to like and subscribe before you go.